Hi, I'm Sean Bailey with the Philly Pops. I'm a multi-instrumentalist, which means I play a bunch of different instruments. And I'm here today to talk to you about practicing as a doubler. A doubler is someone who plays a number of different instruments. And when we practice, our goal is twofold. We want to build flexibility of our embouchure so we're comfortable on different instruments. And we also want to build stability on each instrument so that we feel comfortable right when we pick it up. Really, that just means a lot of time practicing. Um, and I know we have all this time right now and it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, the easiest thing to do is just set specific goals for yourself. So what do you want to do? Um, how are you going to measure it? Is it a speed or a number of times you want to play something correctly? And it should have a timeline associated with it. For instance, I want to be able to play a B-flat scale, three octaves at 16th notes at 120 beats per minute by next Tuesday, which is specific, measurable, timed, and reasonable for me. Um, our baseline practice as a doubler should usually focus on whatever your primary instrument is. For me, it's the classical clarinet. Uh, and that means I spend at least two times the amount of time on my primary instrument as I do on any of my doubles. So if I had an hour to practice in a day, I'll spend half an hour on clarinet, and then I could spend 15 minutes on each one of my doubles. So I have twice as much time on the clarinet as I did on either of my doubles. When it comes to things to practice every day on the clarinet, I like to make sure I have something to work on my fingers, my air, my tongue for articulation, and then some, something else to tie everything together. Again, this is my primary instrument. And if your primary instrument is saxophone, that fourth thing might be an etude or a piece of music you're working on, um, or it might be an imp improvised solo you're transcribing, or if you have a private teacher, maybe they've given you something else to do. Uh, so on clarinet to wake up my fingers, I play this glissando exercise. Keep in mind that we're using our fingers to glissando here, um, which means your fingers are going to be moving very, very slowly. And in between notes, you actually need to use a little more air to try and connect the sound coming out of the instrument, not just what it feels like to be playing the instrument. It's a great way to wake up your fingers and get a feel for uh, how much energy you need to push each one of these keys. After I've done a few of these, I'll turn on my, my handy lie detector here, my metronome. Uh, and I'll play the same exercise but without glissandos. Uh, I'm just going to focus on really using my air to connect each one of these notes. In the middle of the instrument, we do want to use regular F-sharp and not side F-sharp so that we're getting a good feel of resistance on that note, and especially when we have our tuner on, we know uh, how to aim to get that note in tune. After I've worked on my air, I'll start to work on uh, my tongue, which really has two functions on wind instruments. One is position, also known as voicing, or generally where the tongue sits while you're playing. A higher tongue, like E or he, where the tongue is really close to the roof of your mouth, has a way of forcing air to move more rapidly, which can keep your sound more focused. And uh, to work on getting your tongue to say he while you're playing, it can be kind of weird if you're unfamiliar with making that sound while you're playing. You've each practiced a lot, and however you're playing right now probably feels a lot better than anything different, just because it's different and unfamiliar. Uh, so to build flexibility or just to get us searching for something different, um, I'll play this next exercise. On my way back up, I'm actually trying to get my tongue even higher than it was when I started, so I'm really focusing my sound. Once we've mastered that, we're going to remove the register key and try and keep uh, the sound coming out of the instrument in the upper register, which doesn't work unless our air is really focused and moving really quickly. If you're finding that any one of these notes is giving you trouble, um, your air is moving too slowly and the sound drops down. Oh no! Um, just
just start on that note and reset with our e uh, e really get your tongue nice and high until you're comfortable going through the whole exercise um, without the register key and without the notes dropping down. Uh, so the fourth thing I'll do is practice something for articulation. Um, that's just a thing for me. It's the first thing to go if I have a, a couple bad or light days of practice. My tongue always feels like it's really slow, so I like to make sure I'm working on it every single day. This next exercise is by Joseph Gena. Um, and it treats practicing articulation like it's a muscle. So we'll start nice and slow, um, keep about mi a minute between repetitions, and gradually uh, just work this upward, one beat per minute at a time, or two beats per minute at a time. After about a minute, I'll speed up my metronome and play this again. And you can play this exercise for hours and hours, or just for 10 or 20 minutes, especially if you know how much time you have to practice. And we can set a, a goal for what we want to focus our time on. It's really easy to decide how much time to spend on these exercises. The more advanced version of this exercise just uses even more fast notes in a row. The whole concept is called burst tonguing, and it lets you practice tonguing very rapidly without letting fatigue get in the way if you're playing a whole page of our tongue can get tired and slow even if we're capable of playing faster. Uh, so the more advanced version would sound like this. Now the last thing to do on your primary instrument is practice something that's tying everything together. This could be an etude or a piece of music. For me, I like to practice um, little exercises that I make up in different keys uh, to get my brain used to playing things that aren't necessarily written out as notes on a sheet of paper, uh, which is a great way to transition from reading notes to improvising or making things up on the spot. If we're f familiar with playing things that we're not reading, obviously that makes things a little easier if we want to keep playing things that we're not reading. Um, so there are a couple exercises here that I'll play, um, usually starting at a low note and ascending chromatically, or even we can ascend by a whole step or by some other interval. So here's this first one, which kind of sounds like it's out of a Matrix movie. <laughs> Kind of sounds like it's out of a Matrix movie. And this next one, we could even play using a different interval to ascend by. Mm -hmm. 